All right. We took the valve body out, put the new lead frame and stuff on. Unfortunately, we don't have many options, but we did pick one that we're familiar with, which is a Thorman one. We got it from Advanced, and it's the only one available. And the customer said, just go ahead and do it. One of the things to watch out for is, for one, inspect your pass-through. Make sure your O-rings and stuff are good. Well, these look good, and they're still really plush. They're not all flat. Uh, the fluid look good in this transmission. When you look up through this transmission, you can actually see the clutch packs have a lot of material, or the clutches have a lot of material. Nothing looks burnt up inside here. You got all your rubber tubes, gaskets are here, and then you got this blue valve here. It kind of sits up inside this hole right here. So when you slide everything together, well, there it goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide the valve body and stuff up here. Um, I'm gonna get the valve body and stuff slid up here and somewhat bolted down. Everything's clean now. This rubber tube did drop out, so you just stick it back up in there. And then this goes right inside this hole, like I was saying. Sometimes you can get it to stay, sometimes you can't. So we're going to stick the valve body up here, be careful, and get it to stay. So this will go in between these, the valve body facing up, and the peg, this peg right here, it has to line up inside your... Um, I call it a pressure manifold, but it's your actual selector position on which way the oil needs to flow. And this will sit right in the center of this. And you'll go ahead and try to slide it up in there while lining up your parking pole and stuff at the same time. The, the bolts that we started, we started this one. So if you follow these passages, this is the one I started with here. And I started with this one over here. You're snug, 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 snug. And I kind of look up around it, and when I'm setting this whole assembly up here, I'm holding up on the top, there's that solenoid that goes in that pocket, you got to hold it there until you get the valve body up enough, and then you can start, you know, two bolts, get it in nice and snug, and then start putting all your, if you notice here, these are the main supports that hold this thing up here. This, 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 this one, this one, this one. And this one, this one, and this one. So now I'm going to go through, I, 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 if I can stop dropping stuff, I'm going to go through and start every one of those bolts, at least just get them started. So you can see with them hanging down a little bit, other than the two I started already, I don't want to mess with them just yet. Which ones are the actual ones that hold everything up? so you don't disassemble the valve body and it fall apart on you. I took this one apart and cleaned it out just because that's what, you know, that's, that's what we did. But at the same time, uh, it's not necessary to do so if you're just like a DIY guy at home doing it, you might run into a problem. Uh, I'll show you a diagram up there that will help you if you do decide to take it apart. So at least when you take it apart, you can put it back together. Um, but there's some check balls, there's a couple filters and stuff inside. It can be a pain in the butt if you don't know what you're doing and if you don't have the diagram. So I'm gonna hook, actually that one's not, that one doesn't do anything. Where's the, here? And that's it. Then there is these three that hold the lead frame up on this side that you can it's over here on the other side boop 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 there's three of them there and that holds the lead frame up and literally that's all it is to get in this valve body out of here this one this one this one this one this one this one and this one any of these that are hanging out, boom, 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 boom. And then these three over here for the for the lead frame. That I gotta get these started and put back in here. Um, let's see if I can. And if you have to, you can go back and loosen up your couple other ones. Uh, just if your lead frame is not quite lining up right, mine is at least lining up. 
let me do all this off camera so I'm not sitting here trying to make a mess and then I'm gonna go ahead and get my other two bolts put in these don't get torqued that much at all I've done these so much now that I know a lot of you guys are gonna be like ah oh, you didn't torque it I've never had a single one fail so these are only like five to seven foot pounds typically uh, the valve body itself these I go just a hair more but I, I feel it I know I've done so many of these that I know where to stop I don't have to keep you know a torque wrench out every single time it's not I know that's like your guys's way to do it the peanut gallery way to do it but when you're in the field and you're making money and you've done a bunch of these you do what works for you and you, you can feel what it's supposed to be that is she's amazing Make sure your pawl here is lined up with the slot in your parking pawl. And it's got a tab on it, it's got to line up. Your plastic piece here from your lead frame has to line up. Your valve on top has to be there and all your gaskets and stuff need to be there. And now you're ready to go ahead and put your pass through and stuff in, so we'll do that real quick. Here is your pass through and it's slotted. It lines up a certain way. And if you look through the back side, There's a slot in the bottom of it, and this O-ring right here, if it's in good condition, you can reuse it. That slot right there needs to line up with the slot in the pass-through in the back of this. Like this. See, it's in, but then you got to get it to go in all the way. You'll know when it stops because it'll bottom out back there. It won't have very much sticking out past the twist threads for the... Yeah, see, this one's in all the way. No, 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 no. No, the video will pick up all the wind speed. Yeah, it's in all the way. So then, your connector, it'll have a bunch of debris and stuff in it. Sometimes I'll take the residual stuff that's on my hands, as long as it looks pretty clean, and it's good. And it is also slotted. And now that's in there, pass-through's good, it's good, clean it all off, put your filter and stuff back on, put your pan back on, put about four and a half, five quarts of fluid in it, run your vehicle up to operating temperature and recheck your level with the dipstick. On the side of the trans right here, if you didn't know, the 6R80s have a dipstick up here in the front of the very, 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 very front, right here, back here. They have a dipstick, it's a 19 millimeter right here in the side and it's gotta be between a certain margin. Use your owner's manual to figure out what that margin is. The dipstick. Ah. And here, you run it up to operating temperature and I'm pretty sure the way it reads, it's been a while, it should be between A and B. Uh, sometimes it'll have numbers, but this is an A and B setup. Now your filter, it's got a gasket with it. And there's an O-ring on top of this. It comes with it, it's sealed. And it goes in like so. Oh wait, pass through, you gotta lock this in. Before you can take that pass through out, you gotta lock that in. See, if that locks in, you're good. Now that pass through connector won't come out of there anymore. Make sure you lock that in this so the opening for the filter is up here and you just 
to lightly rock it back and forth. And now the filter's in, now you're ready to go ahead and set your pan. So we'll go ahead and set our pan now. Before we keep going, I didn't realize we didn't clean the pan yet, but we're going to pull the magnet out of the pan, clean all the junk off of the magnet. I like to use a microfiber cloth because it kind of catches everything and doesn't release it. Regular shop rags will kind of just smear it around. Uh, microfiber tends to hold it, and I know you're destroying expensive towels, but it's what I like to use. It makes the job a lot easier for me, and the stuff doesn't come back off the rag as easy. Now, we're going to clean the pan, and... He's going to clean all that up, and then here's the gasket. These Ford metal gaskets are reusable. You don't have to replace these unless they're bad, and this one's in still, still in really good shape, so we're going to reuse it. Before we put the pan up there, I'm going to run around this thing and try to clean it as much as I can so I don't get the effect that it's leaking afterwards. Um, you know, that could freak some people out, but just wipe off as much as you can, and then... Uh, after you wipe everything off and you got it nice and clean. Now you're ready to install your pan. And I got you know, too many people in the, the video blocking that. Okay, so I just get a couple holes lined up and you don't gotta be perfect. And then I'll start one bolt on one side. One bolt on the other side. Come on. And then I'll do two at the end. Nah. For the back. It's a swivel quarter inch drive, eight millimeter. And I go through the back, like so, and it keeps it straighter than normal. Like, so you ain't got to sit here and fuss around with it and try to, and you can actually get on it. On it straight. There you go. And then you'll just continue doing that all the way around. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, the electric gadget. Never use electro I use it when I get everything started. Yeah. After I get everything started, then I give it a pass, but not to get it started. So now that everything is done and back together, uh, now my guy's gonna start with about four, four and a half quarts of fluid, and then he's gonna run it and get everything circulated in, and then he's gonna keep pulling the drain plug and checking it once it gets up to operating temperature. This plug simply sits right here. So a little tip for you guys. Whenever you get this, you know, four and a half, five quarts in this pan and you start the vehicle up, that pump is gonna suck that fluid up and you need to be even checking all the way when it's cold from the 
from the time it's cold all the way until it's warm. Every couple minutes, put that dipstick in there and pull it out. See, do I got anything? Oh, wait, I don't have nothing on it. Let me put some in there until I start seeing some on the dipstick. And I had to, I ended up with about eight quarts, five quarts to start, started the vehicle, and then I added about three more quarts after while it's running just to get fluid on the tip of the stick. And then it took about another quart and a half to two quarts to even get it up to the bottom of the B. It's the bottom hash mark, the hash mark closer in. And uh, I ended up getting it right in between the A and the B, right where it needed to be. So start with five in the pan, start the vehicle, the pump will suck up the fluid, and then you'll have to keep topping it off while it's cold until it at least gets on the stick. And then as it's warming up, put some more, put some more, put some more. And it'll get up to, when it's up to about operating temperature, all your fingerprints with your oily fingers and stuff that are all over the pan and the transmission, and it'll start smoking. It'll get hot. And that's right at about operating temperatures when all that smoke starts coming off the back of the pan and the surrounding exhaust and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. But anyway, run it until it gets to operating temperature. Really, it's supposed to be about 195 to 205 degrees. And that's when you check your fluid level temp. If you have a scanner, you can go that route. Uh, but yeah, that's just some uh, talk to get it started. Five quarts in, start the vehicle, put about another two, two and a half, check your dipstick, maybe three, right at about eight, you'll start seeing it show up on the dipstick, and then right at about 10 is when it's completely full. Maybe a little bit less than 10. And it's kind of a pain in the ass to... There's a white plug on the inside of it. So I'll just, I just, yep, right there. Pull it out, pull the plug out, and check your level. And we're using uh, Merc on LV. So I need, I know there's other fluids and stuff out there, but I would prefer on this shop to use this. Uh, Valvoline Max Life, I've used it, it works good. Uh, the Merc on LV, the OE stuff is what I like the best though. See, he's, you can find this thing at Harbor Freight. You can get them on the truck. You can get them on Amazon. Mighty Vac. It's a fluid extractor or uh, fluid filler. And uh, they come in all kinds of different shapes, sizes, shapes, manufacturers. But it does a decent job. A little slow, but it does a good job. And here's the, the description with that pass-through connector that I was showing. The one you got to pull out uh, from the back of the transmission right here. You gotta release that clip before you pull this out of there. Once you pull this out of there. Then you put everything back, put your connector and stuff back in, you run it for a little while until it gets hot and then you check your fluid. And then here, if you removed, if you removed, install the bulkhead connector sleeve seals. That would be these here is what they're talking about. Tighten the main control bolts in the sequence. 71 pound inches, which is I think like, like six foot pounds or something like that. And there's one here. Two, three, four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine. As long as you get the center ones tight, it really, I mean, honestly, it doesn't, you know, don't get too crazy and wrapped up in the order. Mm, these are main control bolts, but yeah, there's the three three bolts the lead frame and then the three in the center and then these over here on the end that's the main control bolts and there's that spring loaded thermal bypass there's your gaskets they were talking about there's the 
rubber sleeves. That's what it says to take it out. You take your clip down in the bottom of the trans, pull the obviously the uh, pan off in the filter out of there, and then there's that clip. Pull it down, and you can pu pull that pass through sleeve right out of there. It says there's a removal tool for the sleeve. It's a 3071. 307717. I've just always been careful and been able to get them out. And here is the if you split the case, you can see inside the stack here, they're slotted for this filter. And there's a filter over here, there's a slotted area it slides down into, and then here's where everything goes. Yeah. Is he dropping his car off? Or? Well, I got a close up shop. Uh, I ran a show by myself today. Uh, my business partner had some stuff to do. This thing took 10 quarts of freaking oil to service that lead frame. Put a new filter and stuff in it. Uh, just so you guys know, the trans filter we used. Where the heck is it at? It was a BL3Z. 7 alpha 098 alpha and the Dorman lead frame we use is a 926149 just so you guys know